Hello everyone, Obscure Titan here with a video of Shantae's tier list. So, my idea for this tier list is that I, I've decided to create what I would consider to be the best written as well as what I feel is wasted. So, something a little bit more in the lines of like how some folks on YouTube would like to make their tier list on tier maker, on things that would consider like wasted potential or you know, roster doster, which is something that the fourth snake did with his Mortal Kombat videos. But for this video, I want to do this in the form of what I think is the most utilized in writing of the Shantae lore, as well as what is the least utilized and wasted potential of some of these characters. And the reason why I'm setting this up on Infinity Photo, because one, I need to have Twitter in order to use tier maker which wouldn't be a problem since i do have one but two they would dictate on which tweets they can delete and which they cannot delete and if it comes to the case where they're if there's liberals out there they just want to get rid of whatever i post then that i would not be making these tier lists and use tier maker i would just use affinity photo or just write them up in a journal post but i want to make this into a video with affinity photo so at least some authoritarians can't take down my tweets. But anyways, so keeping a focus on the writing of Shantae, um, just like I said, what I consider is the best written characters in the series, as well as with the least written. And some points that I'll be pointing out as I go through this, some of the points that I even made in my Roddy Tops video and my Shantae lore critique video on how the series can improve with the Seven Sirens and moving forward. At least it won't be like how Star Giant made her tier list on the cartoon critics and the animation community, where she rambles on on just one or two people, and then just, yeah, it's not, that's a whole nother thing that you already know about. But anyway, so, getting started. So, we'll go ahead and get started with, I consider to be the best written character of all, Roddy Tops. So, Roddy Tops, you already, a lot of you have already known about this from my video. Some of you may not have heard about it, but to nutshell this complicated story, Roddy Tops, I feel, is one of the best utilized characters in the series and really contributed a lot into the series. So, some of you are going to say that even if she hasn't made as much screen time as a few others, I'd argue that the screen time that she had really, I mean, it was well warranted in a lot of ways that some characters, and even some of the more popular ones, I mean, are there really? Because I think Rotten Tops for me is probably, yeah, to my knowledge, is one of the more popular characters in the series. Uh, her contribution is well earned, and it just really goes to show how WayForward really puts this effort into making her. So next character I think is also pretty close, if I can think of one. Maybe... Hmm. I don't think there is one. Uh, I was thinking that maybe either Risky or... Actually since I'm talking about Risky... Um, I do think she has kind of slipped up just a little, but I think she made just enough to warrant on the writing that the series has been going forward through. Aside from Half Genie Hero, but I think that the progression that's been going on from the first game all the way up to Pirate's Curse, and even, even Seven Sirens to some extent, there is... Now, just because I've said this in my video, just because I said that the Seven Sirens and uh, Half Genie Hero don't have much to offer doesn't mean they don't have anything at all they do have some they have some moments of good writing and risky boots i still think she manages to maintain that um status quo that she had throughout the series and even in pirate's curse where she ended up going to the anti-hero role she still has a a good amount of dignity to the series So, as far as best written characters are concerned, we can go right into the good categories. 
the Zombie Brothers, Abner, and Poe. Um, I think from the standpoint of where the contribution goes, I think that they contributed enough to what the series is really um, going towards, especially with the case of Risky's Revenge and Pirate's Curse, where their contributions have really added to the backstory of Roddy Tops. And there's even a point in Pirate's Curse where um, Roddy Tops and the three brothers were the three humans. I, I don't know if we don't have much info on this, but I do think that in theory there were supposed to be three humans who were dead and then they became zombies. And so that's where I think that the whole point of their progression comes into play. And if we get another game that we could really see the zombies again, that could also really give us another indication. Or maybe just a spinoff where it just focuses on Roddy Tops and then we can go into the lore behind the zombies. So moving forward, another character that I think is good, Shantae. Everyone's favorite half genie hero, everyone's favorite hero in town. I think there's still some places where Shantae can improve. Um, but as far as just her overall contribution to the series is concerned, especially as a titular character, she still manages to pull it through. And I think, really for me, if we could go deeper into the whole uh, genie mother and human father story arc, because there were some, there was some build-up with uh, throughout the series, and even Pirate's Curse, and even in Half Genie Hero, um, I think at the very end of Seven Sirens, we did see some bits of some info about the the Genie Guardians that Harmony gave a book to Shantae about. I'd say maybe Harmony could go into this rank as well. She does contribute just at least d decently enough. I don't say I, I don't think it's a lot, but at least enough to where there is some potential to where the series is going. All right. So any good characters I can put in? I was gonna say that Bolo could have lumped into the average, but I think he has been improving. He has been improving as a character. He can still improve more. And I even say he is becoming more competent this time around than with Sky. I'll, I'll get to her in a minute. But uh, I do think he has a good amount of contribution that's been going on. And where he isn't becoming as lame as he used to. I mean, they kind of written him up as some sort of like a hero wannabe of some sorts. But he's actually getting to the point where he's starting to get a little bit more useful. And even at the point where I think he really needs to have a little bit more to shine in the series. And hopefully we get to see more of him and just at least, just at least mean something. Let's see who else I think should be Mimic. Probably on the good tier. Uh, kind of the emotional support for Ashante. Uh, that's all fine and good. All right, now on to the average bit. So, so I'll probably put... No, I'll just save her for a little later. Oh, um, I'm, I'm probably also going to... I'm also going to put... Hypno Baron on the good category. Even though we don't get to see much of him, you can still do more of what you can do with him. And I think because of his part from Risky's Revenge, where it kind of really set the stage for what is to come for Pirate's Curse and even onwards. I don't think he was as well utilized in Half Genie Hero, but he could still contribute to the series in some ways in the next game after Seven Sirens. That or whichever, whatever way for it does. Moving forward. Wink, wink. Yeah, that's a pun. Alright, so average. Mm -hmm. I might just put Lobster Siren in the average category. There isn't really much to her. 
aside from just being cute. I mean, that's kind of what the... That's what pretty much the majority of the Shantae fandom is nowadays. It's It faps over cute girls, and it's kind of concerning, because some of these are quite a bit young, and it's kind of scary, you know, just... But anyway... So I think there's still potential for Lobster Siren to actually mean something to this to the series moving forward. So I, there is potential, but I can't be sure about that. I just think she could have a little bit more to the series. Not to say that her contribution to Seven Sirens was bad. It it still served served it enough, but maybe it could be a little bit more than just, hey, it's a cute girl that gets scared and just. Yeah. So moving on to the average bit. Um, I was gonna say that Mayor of Scuttlebutt could have been on the B tier or even a good tier. Uh, he he hasn't. It doesn't look like he has been able to get up to his status. Well, I mean, he. I'll say this. Okay, so. In the first game, the town wasn't aware of this whole half-genie thing going on. Then Risky's Revenge, Shantae screws up, and then he says that she's fired. Okay, fair enough. Um, there is a reason why that happened, was because he didn't know much about anything of what was going on with Shantae. And then when Shantae made a big slip-up in uh, Risky's Revenge, then that's kind of what caused her to get fired then moving forward to Pirate's Curse, he, or, well, actually, that's before Pirate's Curse, but at the end of Risky's Revenge, he decides to rehire her, and even if she lost her powers, he still tr he still wanted her to protect um, Sequin Land or Scuttletown. Yeah, that's what it's called, Scuttletown. He wanted her to protect Scuttletown, and I th think there is potential for him to actually improving as a character, and I think where he went from being a bit of a picky um, coward boss to someone who realizes his mistake brings Shantae back still doesn't really do much as far as the leader's concerned probably just eats a bunch of food and probably probably will get an episode in 600 pound life but that's another <laughs> the story um, but they didn't really carry over his arc that much in half genie hero I, why why did he fire her in Half Genie Hero? Because she made a slip up? Uh, it, it just didn't really... It just kind of muddled him down just a little. But anyway, so moving forward. Don't want to spend too much time on one character. Alright. Um, let's see. Whose characters I consider average? Plank. I like her design, but... I mean, her character can still improve. Um, if we move forward into the later games where she eventually becomes a genie priestess, that could be possible. Um, I did discuss that in my video where maybe the half genies can become an upgraded versions of themselves. Where Plink can be a priestess and Harmony can be some sort of a sage or... Something of that nature. Um, Vera could also become a healer. And Zappo can be like a brawler of sorts. Speaking of Vera and Zappo. I was a bit back and forth in deciding. If I want to put Zappo in average or good. Uh, it's hard. Because, like I said, there are some good ideas to it, so I'll probably just get, put her on average for right now. Now, just because a character is average doesn't mean that they're bad. They do have some good things going on. It's just that when things like this happen, it's just... I mean, they can still improve in the later games. So I'll also put Zapple over here for now. Let's see any more characters I can see as average you know I think I could probably put 
maybe I'll put. I mean, it's already passed good at this point, but I, there might be some characters I might have left out. But I do think that Pirate Master, even at the barest minimum of screen time, still serves as a good antagonist in Pirate's Curse, in my opinion. And it helped set the conflict that's within the original trilogy. I, I don't believe that he'll be coming back as a villain for the series at this point, but I, I, I could be surprised. Wait for it can surprise us, and that's all there is to it. Let's see. So I'll go ahead and put the. So let me do this. I'll put the seven siren, well the six sirens, anyways. But I'll put the other sirens over here for right now. And we'll go from there. Um, since Twitch and Vinegar are, or Vinegar or Twitch or whatever it is, since they're practically within the same kind of spot, I guess, because they're always together, um, we barely get to see them that much in the series, aside from their play in Pirate's Curse and a little bit of Half Genie Hero. I don't want to say that they're bad by any means. They still did a decent contribution, but they can improve as characters. Average. Oh. <laughs> Almost forgot. I didn't realize of this up until now, but I forgot Sky. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get to her in a minute. It's 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 a whole nother kind of thing that I wanted to go over. But I'll actually go over her in in the end. I'm sorry, Holly fans, but I really don't see how this character had contributed anything to the series. It's I mean it's just a kind of a memory. What's her name again? <laughs> I, I, I guess it's kind of a meme that the fandom has been playing around with since, you know, if people forget about Shantae, then that's kind of what made her memorable. But after that, it's just like, okay, <laughs> uh, that's, that's neat, I guess. There's something I want to go over. Okay. Let me fix that. Okay, so I know I said that I would go for Sky in the end, but I'm still going to bring her up. I just only need the icon of the character, and that is it. Sorry about the short delay. I should have done this earlier, but that's okay. Okay, there we go. Alright. Okay, so for the Ammo Brothers. Or for the Ammo Guys. So we've got Ammo Baron, Armor Baron, and Barracuda Joe. Um, technically, Barracuda Joe is a bit of a minor character, but he increasingly grew into a into an antagonist in Pirate's Curse, in a way. I think he made somewhat of a decent... I'll probably just put him on BD... Um, this whole thing with the Sky thing, I'll get to that in a minute, but I really didn't think that the romance between between him and Sky were that interesting. I mean, you could say this is kind of more of an ironic kind of romance, where maybe they're just not meant to be in that kind of thing. But it just didn't really click with me, to be honest. Uh, 
maybe that's a good category. I think that might be one of the lesser or good written characters, but negative Shantae still had something going for it. It, it. it set the stage to helping out establish the darker side of Shantae. Even though Risky, I'd say, is supposed to be the dark side of Shantae, but that's another thing. Hexer, I'd say it's average. Um, I don't think there's a lot to him, but at the same time, I don't expect him to. Because we only got to see him once in Pirate's Curse and that kind of thing. I think, you know, even, even if... Don't get me wrong, I don't hate Armor Baron. It's, it's not that bad, but I think that Ammo Baron made the better antagonist of the two. And considering how his um, impact in the series really meant, there isn't really much to say for Armor Baron in that sense. But that doesn't mean that there isn't any way for him to improve. Because I think it, there is a way for him to probably come back realizing his mistake and he joins the heroes then he and Admiral Burn kind of get at each other and yeah that actually you know I think it would be nice if we can get these two guys to kind of meet where armor is on the good side and then Admiral Baron's kind of on the bad side or just neutral then they kind of get at it with each other then something happens between the two where it gets them to be together and where they kind of reconcile their differences that would actually be pretty nice if we did that. But I don't think WayForward's going to do that. Because I think they're too busy making hentai. But anyway. All right, we'll, we'll get to this, the sirens in just a moment. Um, not to say that the Squid Baron is great. I think, he, I think he's a little bit overrated as far as the Shantae roster is concerned. But... I mean, you can still have him around, kind of as like a cameo, or just kind of like a a meme of sorts for the series. Because the way this works is that for him, to me at least, I think he's kind of like a representation of how how a lot of the, the geeks and nerds kind of see series in a way, where they just kind of, where they just jump with joy over hypersexualized girl figurines <laughs> it's it's so weird that, that there was literally a saint in seven sirens where he just fawns over the fact that shantae and sky are just in these two suits of armor in these skimpy outfits and as action figures and then he's like oh my god it's it's that i'm gonna get them it's 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 ridiculous it's but yeah, it's just so funny at the same time. Just kind of the irony in all this. Techno Baron. I'd say he's good. I, th I think aside from Squid Baron, the Barons of Sequent Land are, are fairly well done. I think that Hypno Baron seems to have a little bit more going for him. Because I do like the abilities he has going for. And just kind of has... What, sha what foreshadows the events of Pirates Curse and Onwards, but I think that Hypno, or not Hypno, but Ammo Baron just kind of has the most impact of the three villains, or the four villains, I should say. Alright, Sky. Um, this one. Some of you might say that she should be in the best written, or maybe even good, and you would be right, but. Starting in Pirate's Curse and Onwards, her character just got... Yeah, I, I have choice words for how she was treated in the later games. It's... It's really hard to say if I want to put her in the mediocre or wasted. It's... Yeah, it's... Especially with the case of Seven Sirens, it was probably the worst contender for her character to be treated in that way. It's just... Yeah, I'm sorry. She has to be in the Wasted. I don't hate Sky, and I think she she had a pretty good run in the first and second game. But starting with Pirate's Curse, her character's just gotten worse, and Siren Sirens just kind of ruined it for her. 
So seven sirens, or the six sirens. So a lot of them don't really have much going for it, aside from the designs, and maybe some of them may have some a little bit of personality to them, which is nice. Um, I think if I were to rank which one was the most interesting of them all, if I were to exclude Lobster Siren, I think I think Octo Siren kind of has a little bit more going for her because she has a giant octopus that kind of encages her inside its brain, where she's kind of like a mind. She's kind of like the brain to the brawn. That was kind of interesting. Um, I'll probably just put her on average. Not so much it's a great character, but she did had kind of like a threat factor in the fight. Probably the same for Angler, maybe not to the same extent, but I mean she did had something going for her. Lily, she could probably be mediocre. I, I think she may be a little too overrated out of all the sirens. I mean, I get that it's probably because it's the first boss and one that some of the fans will probably be fapping to, but I don't know. It's, I don't know, it's just something, I mean, she does have some legitimacy in the threat factor, but not as much as the other characters, and I'm glad that some of these sirens do have a little bit more going for them. I do like how the, how the Coral Siren just has that robot in a way where I think to me it just looks like that one of the sirens seems to be a little bit more modernized than the rest where the rest of them just seems like a little bit more ancient a little more mythological in a way so I do like the idea of that there isn't really much going on for tube worth aside from the design which I'd say it's going a little bit more for so if I can just, yeah, if I just move them over here from, from worst to best, from best to worst. So, I, yeah, it's a nice design. Maybe a little bit more interesting than Water Lily. Still not much. Um, I'll fix these up in just a minute, but Empress Siren. So, um... I'm not going to say that this is a bad character by any means. I still don't think that it's a great villain overall. She does have some level of um, threat factor. Especially the fact that she took all the genie magic to pretty much become the this all-powerful siren to be feared. But the problem with her is, is that she doesn't have... I mean, she she does almost have the same amount of power as Pirate Master does, but it doesn't seem to have as much um, potential. It just doesn't seem as well utilized as Pirate Master. And something I think, if the Seven Sirens really were to return, well, not all those Sirens, but maybe just at least half of them. Let, let's say if we just have the Lobster Siren and then we have... Um, the Empress Siren, we have Coral, and maybe either Octo or Angler to some extent. Either one of the two. Preferably, I would have liked to see Octo or Siren come back, but hey, whatever you do, you can do for as long as you for as long as you deliver their writing fairly nicely. But I think that Empress Siren could have been much more intimidating. The first half of the fight with her was decent but the second half was just i'm gonna destroy all the gems and just jump over the platforms it, it's yeah it just doesn't click and the fact that the way that she got defeated was yeah i wasn't that big of a fan of the climax so i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of switch things around in between which ones i think are the best to worst in each category so i already did that with wasted and mediocre so i'm going to fix that with average so as far as for the best of average is concerned i think maybe 
I think out of the average, maybe I could put Zapple over here. Now, I could have put Scuttle, but in Mediocre or Wasted, but I mean, the reason for that is because he wasn't horribly mishandled in Half Genie Hero in the same way that Sky did. And he's still kind of the bumbling idiot that we come to love and hate in the series, but anyway. So for the best... Um, uh, maybe put Ammo Baron besides Zappo. Uh, I'll probably put Scuttlebutt over here next to... Next to Armor Baron. Putting Octo Siren over here. Shit, what's going on? Yeah, this thing has an auto select on Affinity Photo, but I could be wrong. You know, I already said this before with Squid Baron. I still think he's a little bit too overrated for the series, but that doesn't mean he, he can just be lower. He can just be ranked lower. He can still be within kind of the middle to high rank i just think he isn't as great as some of the fans would like to say he is the great thing about him was because he was kind of a meme just to kind of how just to kind of how the some of the fans act in a way i mean that's really all that there is to him let's see uh yeah, i'll just put these three over here to the side Put Coral Baron or, or Coral Sun. Coral Baron. What? What? What in the ever living f hell did I just? Did I just say? Okay, sign over here. Put Plink. Vera. Okay. Put Angler or Siren over here. I'll just put Lobster Siren at the bottom of the average. Once I get that, I'll probably just put... I mean, he's not as wasted of... He's not as wasted as... Well, I wouldn't say wasted, but... It, not as underutilized as Empress Siren, but he could still be improved on. All right, now to the good ones. I still think that these two are probably good for where they are. Same thing for Shantae. Um, probably rank Harmony just a little bit lower down. Let's see. Let's see, I'll call Mimic. Hypno Baron, Bolo. Yeah, she's probably going to be the lowest of the good ranks. Actually, I'll probably just move Bolo over here. Kind of have Hypno and Ammo kind of go toe to toe with each other. Then I'm going to put Bolo over here. Have Pirate Master. go all right so looks like we got all the characters ranked from worst to best of shantae so i'm gonna just lower them down just a little okay bring it down just like this all right so from best to worst, this is what I've got right here for the entire series. So we've got Roddy Tops as the best. Runner up is Risky Boots. Then over here at the good, we've got Abner and Poe, Shantae, Mimic, Hypno Baron, Abner Baron, oh no. Ammo Baron, not Abner, Ammo Baron. Bolo, 
Pirate Master, Harmony, Techno Baron, and Negative Shantae. Then on average, we've got Zapple, Armor Baron, Octo Siren. Sorry, I, my voice keeps cracking sometimes. But Octo Baron, or Octo Siren, excuse me, not Baron, it's Siren. But Squid Baron, yep, that's where we are. Coral Siren, Mare Scuttlebutt, Empress Siren, Plink, Vera, Anglerfish, Siren, Twitch and Vinegar, or whichever it is. They're both, like I said, they're both in the same boat. There's not really much of a distinction aside from their designs and names. Hexer and Lobster Siren. Then Bediocre, we have Tube Worm Siren, Water Lily Siren, and Barracuda Joe. Then we've got Holly and Sky as Wasted. Probably the real Wasted ones were these two. I'd say Sky was probably the most wasted out of the series so far, and it's unless if unless if we get another game where Sky maybe can improve in some ways. I I just don't see if there's really any way we can improve on her, especially with how she's been downgraded from a. I, I don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that her life has to be perfect in any ways. There's ways you can you can make her character arc about her going through trials and errors and you can still make it work it's just that the way that this was handled was not not very well executed in seven sirens because unlike with roddy tops okay roddy tops i've already said this before but she was well developed in that game this was not done in the same way with sky But it looks like that's pretty much a good chunk of the characters overall. I might be missing a few others. There are some minor characters, but they're not the ones to really focus on as much. I could have cut some of these out and maybe focus on some of the more prominent ones. Maybe I could have just sliced off all the sirens, aside from Lobster and Empress, maybe. And there wouldn't really be, be a mediocre rank it would have just been a wiser rank and sky would have been the only character in that spot and everyone else would just be from average to best written so that's pretty much all that there is to this rank do you have an idea on what you consider to be the best written characters in the series or do you just kind of have a list of what you think is the cutest and whatnot it's i, I don't know about that one but Whatever you think is your favorite is up to you. But for me, this is what my rank of, or my tier list of Shantae characters is. So thanks for watching. This is Obscure Titan. Feel free to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Over and out.